Hey guys, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech and as kind of the follow-on in the series on CO2, today we're going to talk about how to actually calculate the CO2 consumption in your indoor growing environment. Okay, so this is kind of a complicated process and I'm not going to do the math up here for you guys today because it's pretty complicated math. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how you do it. And so if you want to try and replicate it yourselves, you certainly can. Otherwise, know that we built a calculator following this thought process, this logical process on able.ag. You go to the calculator section, the CO2 uh, generation calculator, it walks through this entire process. So you can see um, after this video basically how that calculator is put together. Before we dig into this, there are three things that we need to really clearly understand about um, supplementing CO2 and then the cost of supplementing CO2. So basically, um, the, the, the physics and the economics behind CO2 supplementation in the indoor growing environment, okay? The first thing is the concept of carbon density, okay? And this is really important because some people think that propane, uh, you know, one pound of propane is the same as one pound of natural gas is the same as one pound of CO2. And that is simply not true. Because we're burning uh, propane and natural gas, uh, the carbon density is actually very high compared to bottled CO2. So understanding carbon density is an important part of, of, of working through this equation and having it make sense at the end. The second thing is the direct cost. And this is basically um, direct cost. So this is essentially the cost of the feedstock. So if we're doing bottled CO2, we need to know what the cost of that CO2 is. Uh, to really understand the cost of the carbon, right? So we know the carbon density and we know the cost of the feedstock, we can start to figure out what the cost of the carbon is directly. The third thing to understand is indirect. And this is the indirect cost of the carbon, okay? This is things like dehumidification, this is things like air conditioning and cooling, right? Because if we're using propane or natural gas, we have the actual cost of the natural gas, the actual cost of the propane, but then we also have the cost of dehumidification. The amount, and, and that really comes down to understanding how much water vapor is released when we burn that propane, burn that natural gas, as well as the number of BTUs that are created when we burn uh, these fuels, right? So we burn these fuels, we're creating water vapor, and we're creating heat, and we gotta get those out of the growing environment. So those are the two big indirect costs. So as part of this, we need to calculate BTUs generated, and we need to create, uh, calculate pounds of water, or gallons of water, or pints of water. Basically, what's the volume of water that we're generating when we burn this stuff? Okay, so those are the top three costs. Now, we're gonna start walking through the process here on how to figure out how much carbon we actually need to be supplementing and what the operational expenses of that will be in the long term. Okay, so number one, we need to know kind of what the general category is for percent carbon of our crop, right? We need to know how much. Is it, is it uh, you know, 50% of dry weight? Is it 50% of dry weight? What is that, okay? Most crops are somewhere between 40 and 60% carbon. We usually split the difference, go with 45 to 50%, and we're usually pretty good. Um, we can usually find out the exact carbon content on a crop by crop basis by going to the literature, but really this is always gonna be a fairly general number because the amount of carbon in the crop varies from crop to crop, from production method to production method. Once we know the amount of carbon in the crop, we need to understand how much is removed or what the total uh, crop size is. So this is basically the amount of crop that is removed on a weekly basis, okay? Or a monthly basis, daily basis, it doesn't matter. We just need to know the total crop size. This is volume removed. And when, once we know what the percent carbon is of the crop, we know what the total crop size or the volume removed is on a dry weight basis. That tells us how much carbon we need to supplement, right? What we're left with, there is a number that tells us you need to supplement this much carbon, okay? So this is 
Yeah, so this is basically the baseline number for the amount of carbon that we need to supplement to get this amount of produce out of our growing environment, right? There are a few other factors that influence it, but we're gonna get to those here in a second. All right, so once we know how much carbon we actually need to supplement to get the amount of production on a weekly basis, we need to figure out how we're going to deliver that carbon. And that requires understanding the carbon content of different types of feedstocks. So, this number here is just a pure carbon. Grams of carbon, kilograms of carbon, pounds of carbon, something like that, right? Now, to, to figure out how we're going to actually deliver that volume, we need to look at the different fuels and uh, as well as pure CO2 and understand these different forms of carbon. So we're talking about different forms of carbon. Uh, we're typically talking about natural gas, which is CH4, okay? We're usually talking about propane, which is C3H8, or we are talking about pure CO2, okay? CO2. Now, the funny thing is, is people think that, okay, I've got 10 pounds of CO2, that's easy, right? That's 10 pounds of carbon. Wrong. With all of these things, we need to actually look at the weight, the molecular weight of each of these um, molecules, right? So for CH4, we have um, carbon, which is around a molecular weight of 12. So CH4 would be 12 plus, plus um, 1 plus one, plus one, plus one, okay? For a total weight of 16, a molecular weight of 16, all right? And this is, this is you know, um, right now we don't need to get into, you know, Avogadro's number and actually calculating out the weight of a mole, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and using this to like do some big complicated uh, chemistry formula. Right now, what we just really want to understand is what is the carbon density of this? The carbon density of this is 12 over 16. Okay, which is a nice big number, that's 75%. Okay, so this is 75% carbon. On a pound for pound basis, uh, this is 75% carbon, all right? Um, for C, C3H8, we basically have um, 12 times three plus one times eight, right? Which gives us a molecular weight of what, 36 plus eight, 44, so this is 36 over 44. So for a pound of propane, we are getting, I don't know what that percentage is. It's still pretty high. Um, I don't think it's quite as, car it's not quite as carbon dense as, as uh, CH4, right? But it's pretty good. Um, actually, a little, it's a little bit more. It's a little bit more carbon dense than, um, than natural gas. So that's a great thing. On a per pound basis, Propane gives us a little bit more carbon. And then, of course, CO2. We have, uh, for CO2, we ha basically have 12 plus 16 times 2, right? That gives us a uh, carbon ratio of 12 over uh, 32 uh, plus 12, which is 44. That's a bad, bad ratio, right? We're talking about 75, 82%, 82 and 27%, okay? So when we're talking about the carbon content of these different things, we're getting the most bang for our buck out of propane and natural gas, right? Propane and natural gas. Now, it does require that we're burning that propane and that natural gas to get that carbon out, right? But as far as just getting it into our growing environment, this is much, much more efficient than just using bottled CO2. So, once we understand the carbon density of this, we can use this percentage uh, on a per pound basis or a cubic foot basis or what have you. And uh, in the calculator on Able.Egg, we've done all of that math because that math can kind of be a pain. Um, because, for instance, propane is measured on a per pound basis, whereas natural gas is measured on a cubic foot basis, right? So you pay for this by cubic foot, you pay for this by pound, you pay for this by pound. And um, while there's some crossover there, there's some conversion, uh, conversion numbers, the reality is, is that, that this math starts to get a little bit complicated as well. So just use the calculator uh, if you want to you know, 
if you want to do those types of calculations. Essentially what this tells us is how much of this, this, and this that we have to burn to get this number, right? And um, this, you know, this ratio here is telling us how much carbon we're putting in there. Now, when we're burning natural gas, we're creating CO2, right? Um, so the thing to remember is, is H4 here, we're creating two uh, water molecules because we've got H2O, right? So when we burn CO4, we're getting one CO2 molecule, right? Burning oxygen, we've got oxygen in the atmosphere. We're using, uh, this is a, a reaction, right? Uh, we're, we're burning this gas, we're getting one molecule of CO2, we're getting two molecules of H2O. Now this is really important because this is water vapor and you've got to take this out of your environment. So this is going back to um, the first list that I had, the indirect cost, right? And we're also creating heat, plus BTUs. Um, the same thing goes for this down here, right? We're creating water vapor and heat. So that's really, really important to understand. Um, after we have this, we can figure out how much carbon we got to put into the environment. Uh, after that, really, the only thing to understand is, is uh, what the efficiency is, right? How much are we losing? How much are we losing to ventilation? How much are we losing to a leaky room? How much of it is, you know, what, what's the efficiency on that? Typically, if it's a completely sealed environment, um, let me put four, efficiency. If it's a completely sealed environment, uh, you know, it might be 20% efficient, right? 15, 20% efficient. That means 20% of your volume uh, or your CO2 you're losing to diffusion. It's diffusing out of the room into the rest of the environment because you've got your grow room, which is very high concentration. You have everything outside of your grow room, which is much lower concentration, closer to, closer to ambient. And also you have to figure into this variable, you have to understand the, the number of times a day that you're turning over your, 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 the volume of your growing environment. So if you're ventilating, and most people are supplementing CO2 and ventilating, right? If you're ventilating, those, uh, those air turnovers, the, the, the amount of times in a day you turn over your, your, your uh, grow room air volume is uh, part of this as well. Now the important thing there is that you understand that ambient still figures into that, so you've always got a nice starting level. If you're bringing air in, it already has an ambient uh, CO2 level of around 400 parts per million, hopefully, right, if you're in a city. So um, that's, that's, that's a nice thing to understand. Once we have this efficiency rating, we can figure out how much of this we have to burn or how much of this on a per pound basis we need to supplement. And as soon as we do that, we can actually start to calculate the cost. And that's just multiplying the, the gross amount of this by our efficiency number here and that will give us our cost on a, on a propane, on a, on a natural gas propane, and just pure CO2 basis. That's how we do that, okay? That's how we do that. So this math gets complicated enough that I didn't want to do it here in front of you guys. Uh, on my other videos, you guys catch my math mistakes all the time. <laughs> so, so to prevent us from having to go back and like redo videos constantly, I just wanted to walk you through the framework for doing this kind of math. Hopefully this is really, really helpful to you. Again, use ABLE, use the calculator on ABLE. We spent a lot of time on it, made it really user friendly. All of these calculations are being done behind the scenes. So it makes it really easy to just put in the numbers and get out the amount that you need um, uh, of natural gas, CO2 or propane. And then it allows you to input your prices for each of these, your local prices, and really clearly understand what it's gonna cost you on a daily basis. So all of those things are there, very easy to put in. Please, please, please use that instead of trying to do this yourself. There are a lot of mistakes that you can make in this process, as you can probably see. So um, hopefully this was useful to you. We're really, really pumped to be talking about CO2. We think it can help a lot of people get much bigger yields in their growing environment. If you have any questions, ask below. Check out the link below to able.ag for the calculator there. Uh, please use that for your growing environment. It's gonna help you bump your yields up quite a lot.